Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Praise God. Can we just call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Yeah, I know you're waiting. Praise God. All right. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Praise God. I was telling you a story, personal story. You know, I heard from some people say, don't preach your experience. Liars. They are liars. How can they say don't preach your experience? <laughs> See, now, don't preach your experience when your experience is not consistent with God's word. But when your experience proves God's word, then you are being a witness to what he said. So preach your experience because you are bearing witness that what he said is true. That's the purpose of testimonies. Testimony is not the, oh, uh, I got a car, praise God. I got a new job, praise God. That's not a testimony. Unbelievers get new jobs. Unbelievers buy cars, they build houses. Those, those are not testimonies. Testimonies are proof that what God has said is true. So for a testimony to be complete, there must be the word of God that came. Then there must be your exercise of faith. And then there must be the results, see? The word, your exercise in believing, then the result, that's a testimony. If no word comes and there is an exercise and there's a result, it doesn't mean it's a testimony. See? For a testimony to be complete, those three ingredients must be present. The word of God coming, the actions you took, and then the results that came from the actions. So I was telling you something yesterday. You know, now the word of God came to me and I remember I told you yesterday I was poking God to get words from his mouth. So his, his, he spoke to me. So I had the word of the Lord. Now there, were, there was a challenge and, and we've lost the first pregnancy. And after that period, after that whole loss, I went before the Lord and I said, Lord, you said, because now I'm married. I can't say, uh, did I make a mistake? That's out of the question, praise God. But then there was a real challenge. Because now, everything God said to you, you're seeing the opposite. It would have been maybe better if the doctors had not said anything. See? But now God spoke. The doctor said, God confirmed what he spoke. But then, the ex the, what, what we're seeing is now exactly what the doctor said. So now you're in a conflict of, okay, who's right? So I went before the Lord. Now, when you, when you say I went before, you know, I went before the Lord. You're going faster. You're going faster. Because now you believe that God cannot be right. But then why am I experiencing exactly what he said I would not experience? You don't waste time dwelling and say, hey, remember I told you, before the pressure comes, because that's one of the things I told the Lord. I said, my wife and I, we're going to come under serious pressure. Okay, so I went before the Lord in fasting. And I said, Lord, you have spoken about this. So what's going on? How are we experiencing this? During that fast, the word of the Lord came to me. Now, this is where I'm driving at. And the Lord said, hey, children, I come in the fire. God. Listen, people are wicked. Be careful with pastors who don't have a relationship with the Lord. Be careful with them. They will lead you astray. The word of the Lord came to me and, and, and God says, hey, come on, yeah. I'll tell you exactly what the Lord said. He said, you have not asked me for children yet. Now we're married. We've lost the first child. And then the Lord is telling me, you have not asked me. That took me... <laughs> I mean, it took, I mean, it caught me off balance. I'm like, I don't get. Are we not supposed to have children? Is it not normal? The Lord says no. He says no. You need to ask me. 
ask. Now, this is my relationship with the Lord. This is my experience. He said, you need to ask me for children. Then, I come on, bra. I've never had anybody teach this before. I've never had. Nobody canceled me on this. Nobody taught me about this. Now, this is what Jesus said. You shall know the truth when you abide. Now, me going back to the Lord showed that I was abiding in his word. Then, then the Lord said, you need to ask me for children. Then I will give you children whose names are written in the book of life. Oh, ye kamade. I've never heard that from anywhere before. I said, wow, I never knew this. He said, yes, because you need to have children whose names are written. I mean, what do you mean? Children, who, their names are already, yes. The Bible said the book of life was written before the foundation of the world. Yes. So now, now there's a natural process of giving birth, but not every child is from God. You need to know that. If a man is fatter, a woman is fat, fatter. I mean, they have sex. There's an exchange of, 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 of um, seeds, um, sperm and all. The woman will get pregnant. She will give birth to children. That doesn't mean that child or those children came from God. Yes. But then the Lord spoke to me something I've never heard before. Ask me and I will give you children whose names are written in the book of life. Now, what was that? You shall know the truth concerning childbirths. If you continue in my word, are you following me now? You continue in my word where childbirth is concerned. The same way you continue with my word concerning anything. Then you are my disciple indeed. Now, now I want you to listen to me carefully so you don't get it wrong. The doctors have said to us, take out this fibroid immediately. If not, you are going to continue experiencing this. So believing the doctors to take out the fibroid immediately was an option. That was an option. But why we couldn't take that is listening to me attentively. We were not doing, we are people of faith. No, we didn't take that option because the word of the Lord has already come to us. The Lord has spoken. Children will never be an issue with you. So, thinking medically now, would be a sin to us. I didn't say following the doctor's advice is a sin. Get me right. I said, because God have already spoken to us, so we had something to hold on to. We had something to abide in. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word of God have come out from his mouth to us. Now, you can't find that in the scriptures. You know what I mean? I mean, now, here we are. Lord, I'm talking to God. I said, Lord, I can't have issues with child ban. These are my reasons. And then the word of the Lord came to me. You will not have it. Thank you, sir. The word came to me. Now, you may not find a scripture to say, I now looked at the Bible and I saw one scripture and I held on to it. It doesn't mean the word of God has come to you. It doesn't mean. Please understand what I'm telling you. Because many people have, have made shipwreck of their faith. They didn't even have faith. They thought they did. So because we're holding on to this, what God has said to us, we couldn't take what the doctors were saying. We had no space for it because we had something we're holding on to already. Now, so when I went back to the Lord, if you abide in my word. We could have just said, you know what, babes, after this one, I don't think we want to suffer this again. I don't think I have that time. Please, let's take this thing out. It was an option. But do you know something could have happened and you lose your wife? 
Yes. There are people who have gone into surgery for something very simple and they didn't make it. And it's like, God, why? God, why? God, why? What did God say to you? And that's how sometimes people take actions and then it's not the doctor's fault. The doctor is professional. He did everything he could have done, but something just didn't add up. Something just went wrong that nobody can explain. It's spiritual. I knew these things. So I held on to the word of the Lord. I said, Lord, except the Lord commands us to take out that, go for that surgery, I would not. So I waited and, 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 and in that fasting, the word of the Lord came to me. He says, hey, you have not asked me for children yet. Truly, that was a shocker to me. But then that was what you shall know the truth. So you see, we are we we stayed, we we followed because we are disciples. I remember, the, you know, when, when we lost the first the first pregnancy, when we lost that pregnancy, the 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 while the doctors were they were talking to both of us, and my wife right there was was bleeding. And they were just explaining, telling how they had to admit my wife. I should take a decision. So I looked at those doctors. I said, sorry, if I take my wife home right now and we'll say we'll come back tomorrow, will she die? <laughs> That's why I asked the doctor. I said, well, but, but you need to act fast. I said, thank you. I turned to my wife. I said, let's go. And she got up. And she was bleeding. She got up. And followed me. Now, imagine <laughs> you are in the hospital and it looks like you needed emergency. And your husband is telling you, let's go back home. No, he didn't say, let's go to another hospital. He said, let's go back home. It was when we left that place. He said, where are we going to? I said, I don't know, but let's leave here. <laughs> now, why? Because their words were, were just like, they, their words were barbaric to me. It was not just making any sense. But because she believed in me, she followed now, she also was a disciple. Are you getting what? She followed me, not because I'm a strong man. She followed me because she believed the word of the Lord that have come to us. She believed in God and she believed in me. So we're on the same page. Now, the same thing I, I, I tell couples. Make sure you're on the, on the same page. Not just that, hey, well, what will I do? I don't want to fight. The fact that you say you don't want to fight means you're not in agreement. You've got to be in agreement. And it shows in your actions. And she followed me. She was still bleeding. The bleeding did not stop. She followed. And then we got home. Now, she has followed me. I have to give direction. I went before that. I said, Lord, what do we do now? And they'll give us an instruction. Now, that, that whole season passed. So after that season passed and whatever, that we did everything, but we didn't go for that surgery. Okay. And then the word of the Lord came to me. When everything was calm, I didn't go into fasting when the whole situation, but when everything was calm, the bleeding had stopped. She had stabilized. We we're fine. Then I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, how do we handle this situation? Then the truth was revealed. I said, you don't discover truth. Now, that scripture has been there. Children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb are his. Those are part of the scriptures we confessed before we even got married. <laughs> we confessed it. You know, we had scriptures we were confessing and declaring whenever we, we, we prayed. So we knew that scripture. But it was in that fast that the word of the Lord came to me concerning that scripture. Didn't I say children are my heritage? He said, yes, I know the scripture. He said, no, you don't. Oh, Lord, I know it's Sam. He said, no, you don't. Then he opened my eyes. He said, you don't discover truth. Truth is revealed to you. He said, ask me for children whose names are in the book of life. Whoa. I went to my wife. I said, I found out. <laughs> I found the truth. I found the truth. Now what happened to me? Liberty came. 
Balopra it a celebrate. Liberty came. <laughs> I said, I found the truth. He said, What's going on? I said, Let's pray. I said, This is what the Lord said to me. He said, Do you know since we got married, we've not asked God for a child? She too was like, hmm? We've not? How did we miss that? I said, we, we, I don't know. We just felt it was normal. I mean, you're married, so we missed it. Like, yeah. So what do we let's pray? I said, hold on, before we pray, this is what the Lord taught me. I had to teach her. And then we finished and we agreed. Held us together and said, Father, now we are ready. Give us children whose names are in the book of life. And I can tell you the truth. We are four. And they came like that. When we are ready, we'll go before the Lord and say, Lord, I think we're ready for another one. <laughs> it's God. I think we're ready for another one. It's only our last child, our last son, Daniel, that we didn't, we didn't ask for. I'll tell you the truth. We didn't ask for. Because we had not even, did, after we had three, we felt maybe we should stop here. Or maybe, maybe not. So my wife asked me, so what do you really think? I said, well, except the Lord speaks to us, but I think we're good. Yeah. And then she was like, when I said, except, uh, when I said, let's see what the Lord will do. That, I think that's exactly what I said. It's like, hmm. Hmm. And then we were, you know, normal carefulness and planning, you know, and all that. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, would you ask you for this one? <laughs> What's going on? Because normally, when we ask, he'll give us the name before. Yes, he'll give us. And remember, we're asking for children whose names are in the book of life. So he gives us the name. And, and most times, I'll be the one to tell my wife, you're pregnant. Say, How do you know? Say, because this is the name of the child. God has said, mm, okay, let's see. That's it. So I went before the Lord and I was like, Lord, what, what's, 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 what's going to happen now? Because we didn't ask you for this. So what's your plan? Because you're taking us by surprise. And, and the Lord told me, yes. I'll never forget. The Lord spoke to me one day. I said, son, I'll give you two options. I said, okay, Lord, I'm listening. He said, between the wisdom of Solomon and the wisdom of Daniel, which one do you want? I smile because I've been schooled on that. <laughs> it's good. I've been schooled. Wait, 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 you're prepared for an exam and then the exam shows up suddenly. Ah, I know the answer. So when the Lord asked me that question, I said, Lord, I want the wisdom of Daniel. I didn't know why he was asking me. I just said, I want the wisdom of Daniel. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, the child, his name shall be called Daniel. Whoa. Okay. So I told my wife, you're carrying a boy. And his name will be Daniel. <laughs> it's God. And, and now, what, what's that? We asked him. So when anybody's giving any contrary testimony, I just looked just look at them. I said, I don't, I don't think they've encountered the same God that I've encountered in these things. How can someone say children don't come from God? Just a natural process. Brothers and sisters, God gives children. Yes, of a truth. Not all children are from him. Oh, yes, not all. If you followed my teachings carefully, I've done this series before. Not all children are from the Lord. But God gives children. He does give children. He who can give you the name. Yes. And I, and I use this opportunity to pray. For you that is watching me right now. Believing God for the fruit of the womb. Maybe you're married. I don't know how long you have waited. But today, I believe I shared this testimony because of you. I believe so. Because it was not in my line of people. And when things happen like this, I know God is reaching out to somebody. I pray for you today. As you release your faith right now in agreement with me. Receive from the Lord. Receive from heaven right now. Children whose names are in the book of life. Join me in faith as we ask the Lord. I say, Father, 
I ask for these ones that are stretching their hands towards their screen, their phones. I ask for them. Just like you have done for us. Can you give them, Lord, now? Children whose names are in the book of life. That they will come into this world and be a blessing to the earth. Children who will walk according to your word and live by faith. Thank you, Father, for we receive answers right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Expect a miracle. Praise God. Yes, expect a miracle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now tonight at 12 midnight, join us. The information is on your screen. Join us via Zoom so you can join us from anywhere you are. And we're going to be praying at every watch from 12 midnight to, and then we'll pray another time of prayer is 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m. That's the last prayer meeting we're going to be having. And we're going to be fasting throughout. Join us. It's going to be a great time of, of the miraculous. God is going to do amazing things in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, hey, I'm not going to see you until next month. Praise <laughs> God. I'm looking forward to what God is going to have us do. And His word that's coming concerning the month. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.